I'm Mike Dirksen here on the set of Vanity Season 2, and here's my interview with Kyle Lauder. So, Kyle, tell me, what has it been like doing a web soap? I love it. I really, really do. Um, it's, look, over the past 10 years, I've been blessed to, you know, be on, you know, two soaps, other soaps, you know, Days of Our Lives for six years and The Bold and Beautiful for four, and, and it was great kind of forming a rela relationships in a family with all these other people, and, and doing a web soap is great. I get to meet new and talented people and play a new character and I'm also really liking the uh, the format in which you know in which we're shooting and it's it's been a lot of fun so far. What about this character? Tell us about Andrew Regis. Andrew Regis, I love this character. When I had my original conversation with Michael Caruso, um, told me that uh, what he kind of had in mind for this character and then he you know wrote the season and then uh, sent me the script and I, I gotta tell you, I love this guy. I think he is, he's, there's a very fine line between playing a villain that you want people to hate him, but you want people to love to hate him. And, and that's what I truly feel has been written here. And he's made my job very easy. Andrew is a, he's kind of a spoiled brat. You know, he's, he's born with a silver spoon in his mouth, has kind of been given everything that he's, that he has without really working for it. Um, he's got a good sense of humor in him, but he's, he's also has an agenda and is definitely somebody that doesn't really consider the feelings of others in, in achieving what he wants to achieve. Um, and, I, and I like that about him, but again, the, the challenge with him is, is to make sure that he's, he is who he is, but to remain likable at the same time. And I'm enjoying it so far. Um, have you found any similarities or differences between Andrew Regis and say Brady Black or Rick Forrester? You know, I got to be honest, I do, not really with Brady. You know, Brady was, I love that character. Um, maybe it was because it was the first character that I ever played. It was my first professional job. Um, I put everything into that character. You know, I, I breathed life into him for, for six years of my life. And he was, Brady was more of a, um, I guess kind of the, the, I don't want to say there was anything really typical about him, but I guess if I had to, he was a very typical male soap opera hero, you know, um, romantic guy, uh, saving the day kind of a guy. Um, so that was him. Rick actually has, um, or had when I played him some, a lot of similarities actually to Andrew. Rick, same thing. He was kind of a spoiled brat at times. Um, you know, born into a very wealthy, you know, fashion mogul family. Um, didn't really have to pound the pavement to get the, the money and the status and the job that he had. And and from there, just kind of maybe he had that lack of appreciation for what he had and, and formed kind of a, an edge on his on his agendas, kind of marching over people to get what he what he wanted. Um, you know, Rick definitely did have a softer side to him, um, but with everything I just mentioned, that's kind of the parallel that I could draw between, you know, the time that I played Rick and then what Andrew Regis is all about. Getting back to Divanity real quick, how does working on this show compare to working on a network soap opera? Well, network soap opera is entirely different from this. They're, they're, they, believe it or not, they're, they're very different animals. I mean, network soap opera, um, humongous soundstage, very, or two, you know, Days of Our Lives shot on two. Uh, many of them do actually. It, you very rarely go on location. It's actually a fun time, you know, when you get to go on location being on a network soap. Um, and how they do it, they just, you, you literally walk on these sound stages and all the sets of the day or the week sometimes are just kind of, you know, one next to each other up and down each side of the sound stage. It's a three, sometimes four camera setup, huge booms on dollies. You know, it, it's, it's, they're made to be well oiled machines because um, you shoot. It's 100 pages a day. Um, so, you know, you, and it's a very, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is this is more of, more of like a prime time television, maybe even a film setup. Single camera, um, you do a scene, you know, you have the luxury of time, more or less, to be able to, to do as many takes as you, as you can to, to get the essence out of a scene or everything that you want to get out of the scene that, that you can. Um, and then of course, with the single camera, you have to do many different angles. Um, I like this setup. I think any actor would like this particular setup because you have a chance by the end of that sometimes hour just for maybe three pages of dialogue, you've really had a chance again to, to kind of catch the essence of the scene and, and what you wanted to accomplish. Whereas you go back to Network Soap, it's like 
dress rehearsal, you know, or camera block it, then dress rehearsal sometimes, and then and then you roll tape. And if you're able to, you know, and then it's just, you know, get everything out you can, do as, as well as you can in the scene. If you if you capture what you wanted to capture and the scene is great, you got to go. You got to move on. And uh, so I like both of them, I both, both setups. I really do. I really don't know if I prefer one over the other. Um, but uh, again, two very different animals. But this is at the end of the day, this is, this is a good time. So what are you working on these days? It's interesting, actually. I, uh, you know, I just wrapped a, a four-year contract run on, on The Bold and Beautiful. I, I love my time there. I, I miss you guys, if any of you are watching this. Um, but it's kind of, it's, it's, it's prompted me to, to really think about what I want to do, you know, at, in my career in terms of different projects. You know, like I said before, I, you know, I spent, you know, the better half of, of 11 years working and that's been wonderful, you know, with, with Days of Our Lives and then right into The Bold and the Beautiful. And I, I want this opportunity now to kind of to maybe see what I can do, you know, as an actor. I want to play... I mean, we're talking two characters in, in 11 years, and I don't want to give the impression that that's, that's a negative or a bad thing at all. I think it's just more of a, I think any actor would agree with me that, you know, you, we do this because we want to explore many different types of characters and, and the full spectrum of, of human emotions and characters from all walks of life. And, and so I'm really looking forward to, you know, to exploring as many different kinds of characters and as many projects as I can right now. And then... And also, I'd, I'd be lying if I said I didn't, you know, there wasn't this kind of, this pull for me to get back into musical theater again, because I, I grew up in New York, I grew up watching musical theater, I, I trained for it for my limited time at, uh, at Syracuse University, and uh, I, I really haven't had, and I did it a lot, you know, back in, back in the day, but I really haven't had the luxury of time to really explore that and or, or much less book a show and then do one you know what I mean I just haven't had that that time to do that so this is a great I look at it as a, it's different because I'm not like nose of the grindstone you know working like I have been but at the same time it's a great you know exploring process right now of, of, of and challenging myself you know what am I capable of and what, what can I do so are we going to get you back for season three? Uh, that's all up to, um, you know, the powers that be on Divanity. We'll see, you know, if, if, you know, we'll see what happens. I hope I'm not, you know, nothing fatal happens to me at the end of this season. But even then, you know. You can always come back. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, man. I think that's it. Hey, appreciate it.